Beyonce. New York. <laughs> New York. Unique New York. New York. New York. New York. All right. All right. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Is that a thing? Is that one too? Uh -huh. Unique, you know, unique. Yeah, that's it. What? Red, yellow, red leather. Red leather, yellow 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 leather. I'm better at that one. I freaking hate New York now. Unique, New York, unique, Like you literally have to think about it and visualize it, or else I'm like, bling. All right. Well, no. Nope. Bye, day one, picky Vicky. This, this is all going into the behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is freaking recording. Okay. Ready? Pronto. Wait, do you do you want me to call you Taylor Church? Like oh. that's what's going on in your books? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just <laughs> mystery girl JoJo. JoJo. Just Jojo. I'm not convinced you have a last name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Hey, you guys, Holistic Hype is back. XO Jojo. Today I have a good buddy on here. Actually, we just met, huh, Tay? <laughs> yes. Um, buddy is a strong word, but um, it's an accurate word. <laughs> I can already tell we're buddies. Yeah, we're buddies. But before we get started, I want to talk about raw elements. I am a sun lover. However, we do have to protect our biggest organ on the skin and make sure that the right ingredients are going on to the skin because as you know, the biggest organ is soaking up every single thing that is going on to the skin. I love raw elements because they are using recycled ingredients for their packaging. They are saving the turtles and they only use natural and organic ingredients in their stuff. They have all the goods there. Go check them out, Raw Elements, um, and use the code XOJOJO, XOJOJO, and get a fat discount and have fun in the sun. All right, Taylor. Wow, how exciting. I'm, so I'm not gonna talk about my biggest organ, but thanks for you doing that. You do have really tan skin. Oh, well, you know, you know how the summer is. The summer is good to my skin. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You get really dark. <laughs> I stay pretty white this summer. Yeah, even though you're a lover of the sun. I am a lover of the sun, yeah. but this summer's been weird. Yeah, you've been hiding out. Work, 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 work. I've been podcasting, not in the sun, but as I'm getting older, 27. Oh, dear. And now it's like, oh, you lose col You start losing collagen at 25. I'm probably I'm probably cancer bound. I doubt it. But I don't know. I just uh, I naturally tan pretty easily, but I also am outside a lot, and when I'm outside, I don't like my shirt to be on. Of course you don't. So yeah. You're getting back to your roots of I'm I want to be back. buck naked. Right. I'm right. <laughs> my hair is long. Right. Exactly. My I'm intuition is long. A little bit long. of a Tarzan type. Hundred yeah. percent. You're like in tune with the roots of being a human being. Exactly. I love I'm it. Often in a tree. Really? No, no, actually not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love climbing trees. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so, all right. So today, I think we're gonna talk about dating. Yeah. And and what it's like to date in yeah. your 20s. I am 27, yeah, yeah. so I'm pushing. I am. I'm what um, what doctors call just outside of your 20s. Okay. Yeah, I'm 32. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a medical condition. I don't like to talk about it, but here we are being open and vulnerable, right? <laughs> At least the doctor's not talking about your skin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I go into a doctor's office and they're like, yeah, we have some bad news. It turns out you're not in your 20s. You're like, oh, like, punch in the face, doc. Like, how could this, how could I ever let this happen? How could but, this be? <laughs> Right. We all have our, our crosses to bear. Let's talk about the 20s, though. Yeah. It's it's funny because just this summer of 2019, I have realized strongly and bluntly that, oh my gosh, it's so crazy that I've almost spent the past 10 plus years trying to figure out something that I've already known since I was 12. Right. Everything I wanted when I was 12 stands true, but it's like I had to go through this big long journey 
of figuring out that I've always known. Right, right. It's the same thing I wanted when I was 12, yeah. but you have to go through the journey of like questioning everything and like figuring out who it's you like, are. It's um, like, do you listen to John Bellion at all? Uh uh. -uh. He's, um, he's one of my favorite musicians, and he has this verse where he says, um, What if who I hope to be was always me? Yes! You know? Exactly. Yeah, and because I think we always just envision our life being something. And then something small changes, and we think, wow, like life's going to be completely different. But yeah. ultimately, certain things just kind of remain true. But the I think the anchor's true, but the environment around the anchor will be different. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's kind of paradoxical, though. Like, everything's always changing, but yeah, the things that matter and like our essence will always be sturdy and yeah. true. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a trip. It is. Being in your 20s is straight up a trick. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's crazy because I think um, some people, their 20s is very, like, almost regimented. It's like, go to college, get a job, work that job, get married at some point, soon after have kids, and it's just a very, like, cy cyclical thing. Yeah. Um, and then... For other people, it's a whole other journey that is not like that at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I find that the people who are doing it by the book of you graduate high school, you either go on a mission, a Mormon mission, or you go to college. Right. Try to find a wife because mm -hmm. you got to start having kids. Yeah. You've got to start making sure you can um, provide for the kids. Right. But then, you know, maybe whether it's in their 30s or 40s, they're almost like kicking themselves because they're like, why didn't I question that? Why why was I in such a rush to start having kids, having married, being married? Because now it's like they're almost in resentment because they, that's just what they thought they had to do. Right. They don't. Maybe they do question it. Maybe they don't. Yeah. I know for a lot of people, ignorance is bliss because it's scary to question things and yeah. it's easier to, to be told what to do. But at some point in your life, you're gonna be like. I feel like my freedom was taken away. Why didn't I like take my time in this area? Why didn't I, what's the rush? Right, well, and it's easy for us to say that, that like we aren't married, we don't have kids. Yeah. Um, so it's easy to, to have that perspective. You know, I have plenty of friends that got married really young and are very happy, but I definitely have friends that are in a tougher spot and probably um, have some resentments and have some regrets. Um, you know, there, there's a whole spectrum of um, of happiness that it's hard to it's hard to look past I think very true I just think I just think if you are able to question your intentions what are your intentions why are you seeking what you're seeking what are, why are you doing what you're doing and if, if one can do that then I don't think there won't be very much regret because I think regret would be such a low vibration to live in. Yeah. And you know, like even people, I know friends who do have kids and they love them to crap. It's not like they're yeah. like, but at the same time, they would maybe be a better parent and a high vibrational parent if they could get past the regret and um, just know that they can trust themselves in the actions that they made and everything that they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for sure. But, um, yeah, dating, let's talk about it. Because I feel like most of my relationships have been long-term. Yeah. But for the past two years, they've gotten shorter and shorter. Okay. Which, to me, means more clearly that I'm realizing what I do want and what I don't want. Sure. And the fact that I'm not still in that young JoJo mind frame of, oh, I'm going to make this work even yeah. if I, you know? I've right. learned so much more of what I want. And um, that's like a big deal to me to realize they're getting shorter and shorter because then it means like I'm not wasting my time right, I've yeah. learned from my past yeah. I've learned from each person I'm so grateful for them no regrets right right, right. and I, I think a lot of people that get themselves in in a tough spot is people that are so love hungry mm -hmm. that they ignore red flags because they want to be in love they want to be in a relationship they want to get married right totally and I can empathize like I want to be in love I want to be in a relationship I want to be married I want to be all those things, but I um, I don't know. I'm just keenly aware of 
what's important in my life and what generates happiness and joy for myself. So when I see that, you know, a roadblock to that happiness, that's when I turn the car around and make a change personally. I love that because for me, I realize I can be an idealist. Yeah. I can't put a partner on a pedestal. I can't have rose colored glasses. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden reality hits and I'm like, what the heck? Where was I when all this right, was happening? Right. Why didn't I see this beforehand? But it's always hindsight. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's just me personally, but I've learned to see more of the red flags. And for me, it's I'm conscious to not have a guard up, to not have, you know, when people get hurt and then they start trusting people yeah. and being vulnerable. And hating and, men. Yeah, yeah, I just don't want to do that. Yeah. So I'm don't like, hate us. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, do Don't hate the male species. Oh, no, we're half the species. Come on. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Um, but to be able to see the red flag and be like, oh, I've done this before. But it's Okay, so let me ask you something. What are some very, like, obvious red flags for you? Because everyone has super different red flags. And everyone has, like, pink flags. Yeah. Those flags are, like... You accidentally put a red flag in with the white flags and, and they're like not full deal breakers but they're not ideal you know yeah okay so what are your red red your deep crimson maroon burgundy flags just red as blood just red as blood it for me that is substance abuse issues okay sure so that that's been a pattern in my life mm -hmm. and I want to hear ever that. dabbled in the dark arts oh yeah 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 for sure mm -hmm. so and I don't judge it. However, at the end of the day, dealing with so many people who over drink, over smoke because mm -hmm. they don't, they're not on the progressive life of like, that's just how they're numbing it. And they don't want to look at what's, what's behind that. Why are you choosing to do that? What are you trying to cover up? Let's go into the deep, dark, subconscious, icky stuff as yeah. to, there's always a core and a root as to why you're doing that. Let's figure that out. That's my personality. Right. So really it's, um, it's an issue of addiction. Yeah. More than just like using a substance, it's more this person has addiction issues. Yeah. Addiction could take on a million different forms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I have no tolerance with that right. anymore. Yeah. At all. What about what if somebody you were dating was in a like an addiction recovery program and they were fairly far along? Would that be worrisome to you? Yeah. They had such issues in the past? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want to deal. Right. Yeah. Period. Yeah, yeah. Exclamation point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what about you? Um, well, you just gave me one red flag. Give, give me a few, and then I'll give you a few. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> um, another one is, are you scared to rock a ship in the ocean? Yeah. Because I've realized if if a ship in any relationship is too like on easy waters, I'm like, you're holding back. Your authentic self will shake up waters because you're setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know more of what you want. You will speak your truth. Right. And that will create friction. But friction is life. Friction yeah, yeah. is adjustment. Friction is being truly you. And... And so I like it when the, sh the boat's rocking so I know that we are on a healthy path because yeah. we can then adjust. Right. I can know more about you and adjust. Yeah. Communication, communication, adjust. You're not quite going overboard, but the, the ship is a little... But it keeps, the, it, keeps it fun for me. I yeah. get bored pretty quick. Right. So I'm like, all right, let's like talk about stuff. So someone who's transparent and who's not a people pleaser. Right, right. Because then I'm like, what are you hiding from me? Yeah, yeah. And I don't want secrets, right? So maybe there's another red flag, like, hmm, there's something up. What are, what am I seeing? Yeah. Um, what else is another red flag? Um, those are probably the two biggest ones. Yeah. Maybe when I meet someone and either they don't have friends. Yeah. Like, why don't you have friends? <laughs> like, oh, I'm kind of a, a low. Why are you alone, bro? Alone wolf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which was totally me not too long ago. <laughs> but, um, and, and I think it shows you clearly who a person is when you do meet their friends. Right, right. Yeah, because that's who they're spending a lot of time with. That's a reflection uh, of them. Yeah, for sure, yeah. 
So those are probably the ones that stick out to me, and maybe okay. some more will come up when you start. Yeah, yeah. Yours. <laughs> some things I'd say might be a little triggering for you. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm also not super interested in, you know, substance abuse and addiction. Um, mm -hmm. To me, I'm not super concerned with someone's past. Um, I'm more, you know, I'm more focused on, on their present and their future, but that's not to say their past can't be indicative of their future, you know. So you, you try to look for patterns and, and um, but yeah, ultimately, I'm, I'm a very forgiving person and I'm a very understanding person. So if somebody's had a dark past, I don't really care, uh, but I want to make sure it's enough in their past that it's not kind of bleeding into the present, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, a big one for me is how someone I'm dating treats strangers. Mm. Um, because I feel like most people are kind and generous to their friends and family, right? Yeah. I mean, some people are just garbage to everyone. Yeah. But I think most most good people, most people you connect with um, are very kind, they're very complimentary to their friends and their people they hang with. But I care even more so, I think, about how they treat, you know, a waiter at a restaurant or a 15-year-old that's making your popcorn at the movie theaters. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it just shows what kind of person you really are. And to me, that's really important. Um, Let's see, another thing, um, and this this red flag of mine, it's not really, um, it's not really a bad thing inherently. It's just a red flag for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like, I don't wanna say I don't like, I don't enjoy as much being around somebody that is extremely, um, Rigid and like non spontaneous mm -hmm. um, people that just need everything scheduled, everything planned, everything um, just with no room for whimsy. Mm -hmm. I need whimsy. Ah, that's a great like, word. I like to say it and I like to live it. You know, I like I like having whimsy in my life. So if someone is like, well. You know, I, I just, I always bring up random stuff like, hey, we should we should go do this. And if someone's like, well, like, we had planned this or whatever. Um, I don't know, I just like to be with somebody that's open to anything, mm -hmm. um, any, any possibility. And it sounds cliche, you always hear girls talk about, you know, I want, I want this adventurous guy. I want, um, I want a guy to, to take me on an adventure. And I don't really know what that means, but um, yeah, I want to be open to, hey, yeah, I know you have to work at 7 in the morning tomorrow, but, you know, we're having a great conversation. Let's talk till 5 a.m., mm. you know, and maybe we don't do that every single night, Yeah. you know, because you got to go to work, but I don't want to be with somebody that's never open to talking late into the night because they have to get up early, if that makes sense. Totally. It's just, it's just that personality type, really. It's not that that person is a bad, stringent ridiculous person it's just not the type of person i vibe with yeah um let's see one more let me give you one more um do you want me to go while you think no i got one <laughs> okay <laughs> um and to me and we could talk more about this but to me a lot of deal breakers in relationships have to do with with the love languages right mm. so it's like my love languages are heavy with um, physical time, or what's it, quality time and physical touch. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm with somebody that just isn't like that, isn't very touchy, isn't very affectionate, that's fine. It's not like I think they're a bad person, but they're a bad person for me. You know, like I, I dated a girl for a few months that I was crazy about, like, on paper, mm -hmm. you know, I loved, I loved her hobbies, her interests, her intellect, her beauty, etc. But um, she like needed nothing from me. <laughs> like she liked me a lot, and she voiced that that she cared about me. But she would have been fine like seeing me 
once or twice a week, and it was just it just wasn't it just wasn't fulfilling enough for me. And it was completely she could have. If I was fine with that, we probably would have got married. She was fine with it, mm -hmm. um, but I was just like not okay with it. And when I voiced it, she was just like, "Well, that's just how I am," you know. Mm -hmm. So to to me, unfortunately, those things can become red flags, even though. I think it's easy for people to be like, oh, but I love this person, you mm -hmm. know, like, or, or people get, people get deeply blinded by beauty, mm -hmm. right? The more beautiful someone is, the more crap they can get away with. So true. You know, and so, and I've been victim of it too. I've been with girls that I think are like, wow, this, this chick is so out of my league. I shouldn't even be playing this sport that I'm going to, I'm going to just pretend these things don't exist. Yeah. You know, kind of put some blinders on. That's true. That's very true. That to boyfriend video, I was like, he's like the epitome of what I want looks wise. Right. So he looked kind of like me. <laughs> yeah. He kind of had like a piratey, like bohemian, like <laughs> long, but that's just. Yeah. You like a pirate. Yeah. Yeah. And he was that Does too. Does he have one eye? No, he had. He had both eyes. Three. Oh, <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, you gotta hold on to. But uh, he had addiction issues. But mm -hmm. oh, he got away with so much because I was just like, he was so beautiful to look right. at. Yeah, yeah. You, I think that's a huge one. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I just thought of um, I I think it's still good. Oh, okay. I thought of one more, and for me specifically, I need someone who's independent and is not codependent on me, mm -hmm. and already has their goals and their mission. Is this a Destiny's Child song you're referencing? I don't I'm know. I'm just kidding. Is it? <laughs> no, it just it just sounds like it could be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm slow. I'm still partially blonde. Um. Because I don't want them to hold me back. But to go off what you said about you not being fulfilled if they are very independent, that's a huge thing going on on the planet right now. Right. Chicks are like, like my mom, she, a big, a big reason she kind of got married to my dad was because he's financially stable. Yeah. But for our parents' day and age, that's like a normal thing. Yeah. But now we're going against all these grands, you know. Um, transgenders and gay lesbian but now we're getting to the point where like let's take away all the labels and yeah. let love be love blah 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 um but females are starting to get into this masculine energy mm -hmm. and men it's it's in our natural nature for the guy to execute the girl it's sure. not that we need saving but to a degree it's like well I need to have a place. I want to open the pickle jar for you. Right, right. I want you to feel like you need my masculine yeah. energy because well, I need your I hate, feminine I energy. I hate to break it to you, but I have bigger hands and can probably open the pickle jar with a little more ease. That's what I'm saying. You know? You men have a place for sure, but females are like, you know, on the grind, going after their own goals. Like, it's such a different age but it's kind of scary because we need to remember there's a time and a place for the masculine energy and for the feminine energy. And at the end of the day, so many uh, feminists are gonna hate me. Right. <laughs> but I'm not a feminist. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not. Right. You need the masculine and the feminine to come together to create unity. Right. And we all have aspects of feminine and masculine. Right. But to know that the man has things that they are naturally have the ability to fulfill in your life and vice versa right like we live in such a trippy time right now dude <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know that's just something to be mindful of yeah I, I think I think it's important because I think women nowadays so many of them they're they're on some some side of the feminist spectrum, right? More so than in decades past. Even if they're not, you know, self-proclaimed feminists, they have a more, they're more aware of, 
of what of what they want and deserve and all that stuff, and that's good, right? Mm-hmm. But I just think it's important that there's in a relationship there's communication. So if a girl is like, listen, I might be a girl, but I don't want to do the laundry. I hate doing laundry. Yeah. Then tell your husband and say, hey, listen, I hate laundry. Can you do it for me? Yeah. Um, you know, these gender roles don't need to exist um, in all the traditional senses, you know? And if the guy's like, listen, I know we need to mow this lawn. I hate mowing lawns. Can you do it for me? Yeah. Like, why does, why, why can't that happen? Instead of, I, I feel like there's all this resentment because if a girl hates doing laundry and she just does it begrudgingly, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, I have to do this because I'm a woman. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, but I don't think the guy's like, well, she has to do it. He's just, that's kind of, you know, his mom probably did it. And yeah. His grandma probably did it. And so that's kind of ingrained in his head, like, they're dirty clothes. She'll probably do it. She's better than me. She knows how to not shrink things. She knows what all the buttons mean. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, but if you're a girl and you're s- deeply averse to doing laundry, just just tell your guy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that that's my thing. Like I'm not I'm not like a super masculine guy in in the sense of like I can't fix anything. <laughs> like, like I'm a hundred percent going to just hire people to fix things in my house. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and I'm fine with that. I'm not insecure about it at all. Yeah. Um, but if a girl needs like a manly guy to fix something, yeah. that's not me. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And 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 on the other side of it, if I am dating a girl that happens to be handy for whatever reason, yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, what do I care? Yeah. You know, if the fridge breaks and she's like, Oh, let me get my tool belt <laughs> that's great. That's the time we're coming into. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't care. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, like for me, I hate doing the dishes. Right. I'll do some laundry. Sure. But yeah, it's give and take. At yeah. the end of the day, our house wants to be clean, comfortable, right. and functioning. So let's see what you bring to the table and what you're naturally good at yeah. and what I am. Yeah, I mean, we're just talking about chores here, but <laughs> but it's like there's other, like, I also hate doing finances. Um, Ugh. But it's like... What happens if I, if I, if I marry someone that also hates doing finances? Then I think we sit down and say, okay, we both hate this. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really matter that I'm the man. Yeah. Um, let's just try to split this up, and if there's one p- part of it that I'm better at or that I hate doing less, like you know, I think it's just so much about communication. I think people build up resentment because they're doing something. They don't want to do and they think it's unfair but they haven't voiced it a hundred percent I'm so passionate about that yeah and that's what I mean why like I want some people in my life to rock the ship because that is you speaking your truth yeah I might get offended for a minute right a day yeah. whatever it is but then I'll absorb it and I'll just appreciate the fact that you open up about it right. so then we can then solve it but I recently read this thing, or it was on a YouTube channel, it was Teal Swan, and she was saying resentment and anger occurs when boundaries have been crossed. Right. And so how you need to get clear on your boundaries. How does that feel for you? It makes me feel like I'm going to build resentment. Okay, well then, set a boundary. Yeah. Speak up, pup. Yeah. I can't read your mind. Yeah, see, I don't like when people call me pup. <laughs> Is that really a thing? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, how many people are calling you pup? Let me draw the line. (laughs) When people say speak up, pup, (laughs) I get upset. (laughs) Only in this, like, studio with JoJo (laughs) would you be called pup. (laughs) You cool cat? You'd be surprised. Cat is also dripping. I'm not an animal. (laughs) (laughs) Unless someone calls me, like, unless it's, like, a black dude that's like, yeah, I I love hanging with this cat. You know? (laughs) It's a different type of cat, and I'm totally okay with that or 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 if like you know a hip dude is like what's up dog you know? right yeah in those contexts what's i like dog? being called a cat or a dog you're but... being serious right now <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm... because i think i get away with it yeah again the the better you look the more you can get away with it. okay <laughs> you know 
But um, no, I really, I'm not one of these people that care, like, if you call people, like some people get bugged by, like, oh, this person calls everybody sweetie, sweetie this, sweetie this, uh, or, or honey this, honey that. I don't care. Call them whatever you want. Yeah. I, I call people stuff that isn't their name, so I don't care. You can call me baby, honey, sweet cheeks. <laughs> sweet cheeks. Even, even if you're a complete stranger, I don't care. Even better. I feel like it's endearing. Yeah. yeah, it used to bug me when chicks my age would call me like sweetie. Yeah. And like, do you think you're above me or something? Right. Like my ego would get all offended. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, my ego has just been dragged through the mud <laughs> over the years. Yeah. So I think it's been good. I think it's. Um, yeah, I just don't care. You feel like, I feel like you're a really calm, down to earth. Like, you process things before you react. You're very grounded. Yeah. Especially for a Gemini. I'm like, <laughs> I, I went on this date with this Gemini. Yeah. And he there was such a know-it-all yeah. and couldn't shut up. And I was like, he was like 36. And yeah. I'm like, bro, bro, get me another glass of wine because I'm just not even going to sp- <laughs> say my opinion because you're just going to freak out over yeah. it. Yeah. But you're very calm and grounded. And is that because you have been dragged through the mud? I don't know. <laughs> Tay. Like, no, no, I just, well, I say that, but it's like, it's all relative because there's plenty of people that have had things way worse than me. Yeah. Right? My life, honestly, has been pretty easy. I just mean, um, I've had plenty of failures in my life. Mm-hmm. So that that's when your ego, you know, takes a hit. But I think it's more just my personality, you know, my inherent personality and of course, there's been times in my life that probably changed me for the better to be a more patient um, and just grounded human, mm-hmm. I guess. But I don't know. A lot of people think I, I just smoke a lot of weed, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. And people are often very surprised to learn that I don't use cannabis. Same here. <laughs> yeah. Like you smoke pot, I'm like, like no. You have tattoos on your fingers. You smoke pot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, nope. Yeah. I really don't. Actually, I'm high on life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I try to refrain from that sentence, but yeah. <laughs> but even in high school, I was yeah. like seminary president. Right. Y'all don't know what that is. I grew up Mormon, and it's a class you take studying religion, Mormonism. I was a freaking president. Yeah, freaking president. I would watch all my friends do drugs and drink, but I, I wouldn't, I would just hang out with them and not do it. Yeah. And, but everyone thought I did when I was in high school. Yeah. I guess I have a vibe of, you must be a stoner. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> yeah. I do want to ask you, though, what failures have you been in? Because to admit that you've been through a lot of failures means that you're really living and trying and getting up and yeah. yeah it's cool um gosh let's see i think you could just look at my life where i am right now especially in the uh the culture and demographic we live in mm-hmm. right in in utah um being highly saturated with the lds culture um which i'm part of right mm-hmm. i'm lds um i think a lot of people outwardly look at someone like myself who's 32 who doesn't have a traditional um, career um, who's not married who doesn't have kids as you know I don't think they would outwardly say hey this dude's a failure but I know a lot of people think it you know what I mean Um, and that that used to bother me a little bit when I was younger it doesn't really anymore but I just mean you know little things failed relationships um, failed attempts at um, different career paths. Um, what have you tried? I'm curious. Um, and some of it to me in my mind is not a failure. It's just like it didn't work out or I changed my mind, but it, it's viewed by other people as failures. Mm. Um, I So I went to school and was a history major and ultimately just wanted to teach high school history and coach basketball. Mm. Just wanted to be that guy. Mm. Um, and I was pretty close, like, I was basically done with my degree, and I started coaching as, like, an assistant coach at a high school, um, and I did that for four years, and I really enjoyed it, I just kind of decided that wasn't ultimately what I wanted to do, um, I wanted to 
write and I wanted to um, get books out there and put out content and just live a more free life than just um, going to school every day. <laughs> yeah. And um, even though you know I love being around kids, I love teaching, I love history, I love learning, I love coaching, um, but ultimately I just wanted more, I guess. Um, so when I kind of came to that roadblock and decided, not, not roadblock, when I, when I came to the point where I was like, well, I think I want to just be a writer full time, it was kind of, it was kind of a kick to the ego because it's virtually impossible to just instantly be a successful, famous writer. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, first of all, you have to write something. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, you can't. Um, like, even compared to like being a musician, if you're super talented, you can make a song, put it online, and it goes viral within a couple of days. Right. You know, there's no way to do that as a writer. Yeah. You know, true. and so. And I wanted it bad, and I wanted to do it as quickly as possible. And so, I, my my ego was was quickly um, dragged through the mud a little bit. It's it's, just, it's it's humbling. It's good stuff. Totally yeah. humbling. Yeah. And so, yeah. And like I said, a lot of those failures are like failed relationships. Um, but uh, yeah. And I think you nailed it on the head. It's, oh, wait, was it a failure? Or am I just looking through the eyes of outside perspective right. and their opinions? Yeah. And what is, what is, a, what is a, a failure really mean? Exactly. You know, to me, a failure is like you didn't try because you were scared. Yeah. Or you, you quit because it was too hard. Yeah. Or you wanted to do something you love, but you did something that you can tolerate because it's easier. Mm -hmm. To me, those are failures. Yeah. 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 Failure means to me just not trying. Yeah. Because the more I, I mean, if you don't try, you don't get clarity on what you want. Right. You know? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to try to, you know, be a history major, got it, history major, maybe be a teacher, basketball, and then it becomes clear, um, no, I don't think I'd be actually really happy, so I'm yeah. glad I was able to take the steps to realize that, so... I make the right choices from here on out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Like I was living in Hawaii on and off for three years. And uh, the last time I was there, I was cleaning for my girl Kwan. What's up, girl? <laughs> I miss you. And um, I made good money. And I was like, oh, I'm moving back to Utah. So I started my own cleaning business. And I was like, maybe I'm going to get this going big so I don't have to look for Kinky eventually. But that's a journey. It's right. like writing a book. Right. And it's like, ugh. I do not want to get this big because I freaking hate it. Yeah. I mean, it's getting me by. and I'm grateful that I got my business license to do it and I executed it. But yeah. now I'm getting more clear on what my priorities really are. And the more I think people try to do things that interest them, even a little spark. I think if you see a spark, run toward it. Right. Because the faster you go balls deep and run toward it, the sooner you'll realize what you truly want. I love when girls say balls deep, by the way. Hey. What up, pup? <laughs> you know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> but, but, you know, I just don't. My biggest fear is having um, regret of not trying something. Sure. And, and I think people are too scared of failure or scared of, you know, being denied. Yeah or something but whether you want to ask that guy or girl out whether you want to try that job you want to switch careers wh whatever it is you might as well you just start try wearing it. skinny jeans but you're not ready yeah you know? taking big leaps you yeah. know it's that's like, not that's not me by the way i've been wearing skinny jeans for a while you rock the shit out of them oh thank you <laughs> you got cool skis <laughs> um but two I think people are so consumed and worried about what outside sources are going to think of them, especially here in Utah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like everyone in this culture, most people are not happy in their lives, so they like to talk about people in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, the people who truly love you just want you happy. Right. And at the end of the day, people are laying their heads on the pillows thinking of their life and their vortex and not you. No right. offense. Yeah, yeah. 
So that being said, if people are all selfish and just focusing on their vortex, do you just do you make these leaps? Yeah. What? Who cares what they think about it? They're only thinking about it for like five seconds because they're just focused on themselves. What do you think? Right, right. Like, like when, when you said earlier that you feel like I'm a very grounded human and you gather this from the 30 minutes we've known each other. Um, a lot of it is me coming to the realization that I am deeply insignificant in the grand scheme of things. You know? mm-hmm. But it's hard because your whole life you are the absolute center of the explored universe yeah. um, in everything you do. But when you realize that everyone views their life that way, um, everyone thinks they are the absolute center of the universe and everything happens to them and around them and their periphery, um, I, to, to me it's liberating. You just realize like, okay, I'm actually not like a super important, magnificent, I'm just part of, I'm part of this family. I'm part of this, this existence. And, um, and I, can, I can help people. I can help people have a better ride. Or I can just focus on my journey. Mm. Love it. Well, I think it's a paradox. Because, yeah, you, you become humbled at the fact at some point in your life that you are insignificant and yeah. we're all just self-absorbed and focused on us. Yeah. Because we want to protect ourselves. We want to keep ourselves safe. It's yeah. the animal within us. Mm-hmm. But the paradox being, I'm so insignificant. The universe is huge. Yeah. There's so many people on the planet. Blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, knowing that it's a small world after all, and your peace is affecting people and yeah. influencing people and it's causing a ripple effect. Yeah. So, yes. It's the paradox of, I am so small, but you're so big. Right, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm a big believer in ripple effects. Totally. Um, the, the butterfly effect, so to speak, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and the cool thing, it's both cool and frustrating, is like probably 99% of your quote unquote ripples, you'll just never see. Yep. You know? Yep. You'll never know how much you affect someone or how much you change someone. That you briefly meet or come in contact with you know there's I could probably think of dozens of people in my life that really changed the way I view the world that probably wouldn't recognize me if, if we you know if we got in the same room they're like I don't know that guy mm-hmm. like oh no that guy said something in my middle school that kind of changed how I think mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and so yeah I think it's impactful to to realize the power you have, even though you are kind of powerless, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Like, there was a time I was in the presence of this girl, and she was listening to me and my sister talk, but I was talking to all two of them. But the girl listening to me, she didn't acknowledge what I was saying she was literally just silent and what I was saying I didn't necessarily need feedback I was kind of just being chatty Kathy yeah but she left such a ripple effect on me in the sense that why do we feel like we have to say things if or why do we say what we say Mm -hmm. do we do it to make the person feel comfortable like but I know she's listening I know she's absorbing 100% what I'm saying, but she was so comfortable just being and being silent. Right. And I was like, that is so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I became way passionate about just being an observer, and that's what it takes to be a good therapist. Yeah, sure. Someone who you know I'm listening, but I'm just being, and then you start answering your own questions, mm-hmm. and then you realize you don't need the validation of the listener, you just need the validation of yourself. Right. So it's just small things like that. The butterfly, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool, but it is cause and effect, cause and effect, because everything's going to have a cause and effect. No right. matter what you do, it's going to affect people. So if one can be conscious of of w- what move they choose to make, what leap they want to fall on, blah, 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 they can make a bigger ripple effect by one simple move. And I guess that leads to the idea of 
work smarter, not harder. Right, right. You know? Yeah. My brain's just squirrel mode right now. Squirrel but. mode. <laughs> I don't think squirrels dive this deep. I think they, they just uh, are looking for acorns. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I am doing that, I feel like. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Is that fine? I think it's fine. Yeah, okay. I was recording last time. Um, yeah, no, this is a good job. Yeah, I I, I'm not, we, we veered very far away from dating, but. <laughs> yeah, that tends to happen yeah. in this room with me. Um, but dating, so, I mean, I'm at this point where I just tr have found a trust within God, the universe, my higher self, myself, that the right person will come in at the right time, mm -hmm. as long as I am, right now I'm in the zone of being a yes man. Yeah. I think there's flows of being yes man and no man. Mm -hmm. Experience a bunch and then go through a hermit phase where you process, yeah. you know what you want, don't want, and then it's back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yes, man, no, man, yes, man. Totally, yes, man. Yeah. Putting myself out there, trying new things, yeah. meeting new people. And I know that if I keep embracing this yes, man phase and doing what I love and what feels good to me, I will inevitably attract the vibration that's supposed to come in because I'm placing myself there. Yeah by initially getting uncomfortable. Yeah, 100%. You know, and then you start getting used to that, and then you evolve, evolve, evolve mm -hmm. with the flows and the waves, yes, right? Yes, yes, So, yeah, I'm single, but, I mean, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, even if I know what's meant to be will be, yeah. so I sit there and stress about it. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's easier said than done, but. It's a journey. Yeah. It's a, it's a healthy mind space to be in. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I like the feeling of having freedom of having peace. Yeah. Because I haven't always been like this, but it is a journey of realizing that you're, you are where you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. and sooner or later you will be vulnerable you will let go of trying to control things because you can only hold on for so long right you know i think you learn by thinking you have control and then all of a sudden the rope that you're trying to hold on to all these pokies come out you're still trying to hold on because you want control you want that comfortable feeling but then you let go and you're vulnerable and then that's when God comes in, intuition comes in, and you gain insight and then clarity, and then you move on from there. Mm -hmm. But humans love feeling like they're protecting their ego and holding on to things so they feel like they're in control, but as yeah. much control as we have, we don't. Right. We really don't. That's true. You just have to let go. Yeah. You know, the ego has been a big theme on this this episode. I can't help it. You know? But I, I like it. I feel like so many people don't confront their ego enough. They, they act like it's not there, like it's not a thing. But your ego will dominate your entire life if you let it. Well, I think that's why there's such a strong victim mentality. Mm -hmm. There is an ego. And there's these... I want to be a victim. That sounds funny. I mean, How come everyone gets to be a victim but, but the white male? <laughs> the straight white male. Come on. That's so true. I know. I just want to be... I want somebody to take advantage of me. <laughs> In a healthy, you know, appropriate way. I just want to be, I don't know. It feels unfair to me. Hey, you have, you have a safe place to play victim mode for a minute. Okay. <laughs> You're safe in this room to yeah, play victim. Yeah, two minutes to be the victim. <laughs> <laughs> you can freely express your victim mode right now. But, and you know, being the victim is fine because I think it's part of the process of healing, but um, I don't know, like I said, you can only play the victim for so long until you realize you are only playing the victim because your boundaries were crossed because you did not set boundaries with the person or situation or thing. Right, and I mean, here's the thing, there's plenty of people that have been terribly victimized in awful ways, um, and they have every right to feel victimized and to voice that um, and to progress towards a healing place but no matter what you've been through playing that victim card and having that victim mentality permeate your life just doesn't get you anywhere it doesn't help it doesn't you know like of course 
something terrible happened and you want to get over it, you want to rectify it, you want to right what was wrong, and that's fine. But, yeah, like, it just doesn't help. What does help, though, if you are in a victim state, there's nothing wrong with that process. It's a process. You have to realize you were a victim in some cases. Right. But if you guys uh, want to get out of that state of being the victim, uh, look up Byron Katie, B Y R L N K A T I E, and she's a she actually created a process with the work. It's called the work. It's a piece of paper full of questions. Someone guides you through those questions, and you actually play alchemy of how to look at it differently so you are looking at it with more of a loving peaceful place instead of anger and vengeful and bitterness right. and and you can do this sheet with anyone who's crossed you or made you mad whether it's it, even if it's yourself and I, i've seen true transformation come from byron katie's work um so look into that no matter where you are in life i totally recommend everyone look into our stuff because it's really life-changing and once you start implementing this new pattern into your life you won't be the victim anymore right you rise above it real quick that sounds nice but again i've never been a victim so i can't <laughs> read it i'm not allowed to <laughs> they won't let me hey it's a great day to play the victim <laughs> it's, it's rainy little, weather yeah, it's a little gloomy i love it yeah i love gloomy weather yeah it's nice it's my favorite yeah i just like a little variety same. I do too. We should look up your zodiac chart. Oh, should we? I'm interested. Are yeah, you interested? I bet you in are. I'm not. You're not interested? No, not at all. What? Yeah. Why? Are you just as surprised as people are that I don't smoke marijuana? Yeah, I feel like <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't, yeah, people, people always look at me and assume that I'm like into astrology and I don't, stuff. I don't think that. Most people <laughs> are skeptics. Right. However, through astro astrology, I have figured out my unique um, speaking communication style mm -hmm. and my love language. Yeah. I've gotten more clear on things right. from astrology that helps me recognize myself in such a way where I can act accordingly. Right. Oh, maybe I come across as such a freaking blunt asshole sometimes yeah. because I have this energy here and this yeah, energy yeah. here it makes sense yeah. no that and I think that's great that you can derive something from it I just can't really yeah and it's because I don't really like believe in it mm. you know and so, but it's like to me it's like like Buddhism like I don't believe in Buddha you know I don't believe in the principles of Buddhism but I see a lot of great things from those principles, mm -hmm. right? Um, I see a lot of, of good things from that and from a myriad of religions, but it doesn't mean I believe in that specific, like, doctrine right. or whatever. Right. right. So to me, it's like, and I already understand pretty well without any, without any extra help, my love languages and how I communicate and stuff like that so the aligning of stars doesn't really have anything to do with it for me but I am interested when people are like oh you're a Gemini let's talk <laughs> I, I just think it's funny that being born in, in June people people assume things about you yeah Yeah. but you, you seem well versed in the zodiacs mm -hmm. correct yeah okay so what tell me why don't you break it down for me? Am I am I your typical Gemini from what you've gathered so far? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, how so? Uh. Because I, I really don't know. Like I've had people tell me stuff before. I actually had a girl break up with me because I was a Gemini. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But we we weren't too we weren't too deep into it. <laughs> we had, we've been seeing each other for a few weeks and she was super into it, and she probably didn't like that I kind of made fun of it, right? But it was also. She was like, she was a Gemini too, and she's like, it just doesn't work. Two Geminis can't work. That's bullshit. I've, I've tried it before. <laughs> I've tried it. And uh, she just, she just had it in her brain that it was not going to work. Man, that's sad, dude. Yeah. That's sad yeah. because society. I mean, she was a little bonkers, probably, <laughs> but she, 
um, was uh, very nice to look at. So nice. Again, I, I looked past the bonkers for a second. Yep. Yeah, pretty people do that. Yeah. Um, there's so much to astrology. There's your sun sign, mm -hmm. which is the most basic general traits. Yeah. But you have to take it with a grain of salt. Sure. So you have the sun sign, which is a masculine energy, and then the moon sign. So the moon is how the feminine side of sign of how you take an emotion and how you internalize emotion. So then you have your moon sign. Yeah. Which only people who really know you would be able would to maybe know, tell. Would know my my moon cycles. Your how you react emotionally. Yeah. And then you have your probably, rising probably sign. Probably like a woman. Yeah. yeah. So then you have your rising, mm -hmm. and then your rising is how you are in a new situation. If you were to enter a room at a party and you don't know anyone, it's kind of your energy that you have there. Yeah. Then you have your midhaven, and your midhaven is your highest calling, your career path. So my midhaven is a Gemini. Yeah. So I get bored pretty quick. I'm juggling like three jobs at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I love the mental stimulation. Mm -hmm. And then you have Mercury, Uranus, Jupiter, Mars, oh all you have all these planetary effects on a person. So no, you're not just a freaking Gemini. Right, right. You are such a unique individual and no one else is like right. you. But what makes me what makes me like typical Gemini? Just from just from Just from your sun sign? No, no I, I don't just from what you've observed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, your height. My height. Yeah. Okay. Because so you're I'm tall. tall. So most Gemini's are tall. Yeah. Okay. Um, your Gemini's can get away with wearing anything, and they'll rock the shit out of it. Really? Yes. Interesting. Even in like the eighteen uh, sixties, Gemini's could like wear whatever. <laughs> whatever. They're wearing dresses, <laughs> kilts, whatever. They're like, um, Sally, where's your bonnet? She's like. Um, Straight up, you'll see the Gemini just <laughs> rock it, strut into a room, so and just probably all the all the witches in Salem that were burned with all the Gemini. We should do some research. Oh, I've I've already done research. You you know about all the witches in Salem? Their zodiac signs. A lot of a lot of witches are Aries. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're deep into this. Dude, I've been studying it since right out of high school, almost ten years. I like that. I like that. Okay. But two. Okay, so I'm a hairdresser, I do hairdressing yeah. on the side. Mm -hmm. Every Gemini that comes in, yeah. they are up to date on what's going on in the world. Okay. They're up to date because their brain is constantly seeking the new update. So Gemini is ruled by, I think, Apollo, which is a communicator between realms. Okay. So Geminis are actually extremely intuitive because they are literally communicating from the other side of the veil to this realm mm. so their brain is seeking what's going on yeah. what's happening yeah. like they just give me the updates because i'm not like that at all i'm right. like hey, it stresses me out. they're on all the the social apps they're really social they're yeah. intellectually curious right so i don't know i'm giving you the basics but what yeah. it is is it's your dope style for <laughs> one and the fact that you're a writer yeah. gemini's are extremely good with words mm. interesting i want you to tell me something that I'm like, nope, wrong, that's not me. I know, but it's not happening. I know, but I wanted you to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I see you waiting. <laughs> like, <laughs> shit, she's right. <laughs> like, okay, all right, I get it. <laughs> Yo, that's why I'm curious about your other signs, because I have a Gemini buddy, but his moon sign is a Virgo, yeah. which is quite the opposite. It's a very grounded, practical, organized, perfectionist so he has this groundedness to him yeah. there's so much to astrology that right. people just don't even know sure yeah. so much that, yeah. and at the end of the day we're all we're all the signs and we're all none of the signs yeah yeah take it with a grain of salt i'm not going to break up with anyone because of you're a sun gemini yeah. jeez <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. yeah so that seems pretty harsh, but hey, she knows what she wants. She doesn't want a sun Gemini. Yeah, screw that. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't show her any of my charts or anything. <laughs> she just knew your son? I don't know. Like, she just was like, wait, wait, June 6th? She was disturbed by it. She was disturbed that we were both Geminis, and she made it sound like, like it was just an Israeli and a Palestine baby. <laughs> like, it just couldn't be. 
Dude, I need to talk to this chick. <laughs> She's so ignorant of astrology. Well, I think a lot of I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little uh, one sided here and say I think a lot of chicks are because I don't think a lot of dudes are super into it. Um, I'm sure they they exist, but I know zero guys that are into astrology. Dude, like no one's into astrology, and I'm like, let me teach you. Right, right, right. But I think a lot of people are into it casually. Casually. Right. It sounds interesting and comforting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they don't dive super deep into it. But you have to. You right. can't be ignorant well, on you have topics. To, anything. Yeah, you have to dive deep into anything to really understand it. I mean, I think it's healthy to be a skeptic, but to be a skeptic who chooses to be ignorant is stupid. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of that way. I I am skeptical about it. I haven't. <laughs> but if it doesn't intrigue your brain, then right. that's one thing. And I'm, and I'm open, like, I like the fact that, you know, it gives some people comfort, it gives some people insight into their lives or whatever. I think that's great. I just don't. Not for you. I don't see any benefits for myself, personally. Mm. So, yeah. I feel, yeah. yeah, no judgment here. But I'm not, like, wandering around like, who am I? Yeah. You know, can the sun guide me back to who my I am? maker? I because to me it's all just energy right. like everything for me boils down to energy there was a time when I was Mormon mm. and then I was dating a guy who was really atheist and just science based yeah. so I went through that phase for a yeah. minute and then after that I came to the conclusion that science and spirituality is the same yeah. coin so I I heard you mention um, God right yeah. so what are you now are you a little bit agnostic or are you I'm I'm either all religions or no religions and I'm just Spiritual, okay. if you want to label it. Okay, but you believe in a supreme maker. Uh, I believe in um, a high consciousness. That doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. It's just it, like I, I respect that, that that's your belief. I just don't know what that means. Like to me, that's just way too nebulous. Okay. A higher conscious, like, what does that mean? So I think. Here's here's how I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna paint a picture okay, for you. For okay, so you have Marlin. He's looking for his son Nemo. Right. Okay. I, I was thinking Marlin Wayans. Okay. <laughs> and Marlin is looking for his son, and he's in the depths of the ocean. Sometimes he's in really scary places. He, I haven't seen this, by the way. So. What? I think I saw it with a girl one time. You've never seen Finding Nemo. No, I don't really watch children's movies. You're that such was, a Gemini. Just, just kidding. Just kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> Wait, you've never seen freaking Finding Nemo. I honestly think I saw a part of it with a girl, but like we started making out or something. I'm just. But Taylor, Taylor, yeah, Taylor. I'm sorry. If you are invited happy. back to my podcast room, you better come back knowing the plot line of Finding Freaking Nemo. I'm happy to Wikipedia. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> Okay, okay, but for all my listeners who have seen it, <laughs> I'll still pay you the picture even sure, if you haven't seen it. Sure. So Marlon's looking for his son, and he's going all throughout the ocean. Like, this is one big, long journey. And then finally at one point in the movie, he comes across the turtles. Yeah. And the turtles are entering this... They're still in the ocean, obviously. They're fishes. But they find this stream, this unconscious stream that is... They jump into, and they're spinning around, and they're like, dude, dude like having fun but they're trusting this journey of this flow that they have entered right. so to me higher consciousness in this big ocean where life exists right. um, is this God consciousness whether you want to call it intuition but you trust it you're right. just in the flow and you don't have control over where the flow's going but you're trusting it yeah. and you're having fun spinning around however you want to move talking to whoever you want to talk to but at the end of the day as you're going about every all your moves and who you're choosing to talk to you are trusting that this flow is guiding you and leading you to wherever you're meant to be and you trust it because because it feels good in there and it's a fun ride and it feels effortless yeah. you're not like lost like merlin mm-hmm. merlin whatever the hell his name is yeah yeah mm-hmm. so so god to me is literally tapping into yourself because even Jesus says to know God is to know yourself right. and 
and figuring out what, what you like and what you don't like, what serves you, what doesn't serve you, what makes you vibrate higher, what doesn't. So you can begin to have less resistance, less friction, and start to find more peace because you are consciously choosing what environments you place yourself in, what people you choose to talk to, what what physical activities actually make you hyped. Like whatever it is, yeah. to me, that's tapping into God, and God is peace. Okay. So to me, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of just, just punch me, Taylor. I'm just gonna kind of punch you. Um, <laughs> To me, you just described, to me, you just gave me, like, characteristics and adjectives of what God is to you. Okay. Which is great. But I'm asking, do you believe that there is a single, like, supreme creator of the universe that is God, not just... Like a man in the sky? Yeah. Or a man anywhere. Like, or a woman, I don't care what you think. I just mean, do you believe, like... You quoted Jesus. Do you believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ? Um, I'm just I personally to don't. Okay, okay. So you don't believe in like a singular, like monotheistic God? No. Okay. See, that's that's just all I was asking. But I believe that exists. What do you mean? You, you don't believe... It exists, but you believe it exists? I believe if your mind believes that is what is true mm-hmm. for you, you will experience that. Well, sure, but, but like, if I believe that that God is, is a giant um, lizard, that, that doesn't mean that the lizard actually exists. It just means that I get something out of the lizard, right? So how do you know the lizard doesn't exist if it is, exists in your mind? I mean, it might I don't personally believe in a giant lizard. <laughs> but I just mean no. I I get what you're saying. I was just asking. I just wanted a more black and white answer. Mm. Um, That's kind of a hard one for me to answer. I know. But I just I um because I like talking religion with people, and I'm not trying to evangelize. Oh no, not at all. But um, I like I get a little bothered when when people's answer is is ambiguous to me, like. Um, because saying like you're just a spiritual person to me I just don't know what that means you know like what I want to I'm just interested in what people really truly believe in Mm. rather than just they like being spiritual because that and that's great I just I just don't really know what that means and I feel like a lot of people say that because they don't really know what they believe in and it's so trendy right now right right and it feels a little trendy yeah which kind of um, makes me want to vomit, mm. um, but but that's fine. Again, I don't I don't care what people believe in. I'm just as far as dialogue goes, I like to know what they actually actually believe in. It's interesting. I have I have something that might give you more clarity on mm-hmm. what it is that I personally, as a spiritual person, believe yeah. in. Yeah. Um. So you have like a big, huge mirror, mm-hmm. like huge, and it drops from a really like high high place yeah. like let's say from space to here bottom of the ocean yeah. and it breaks mm-hmm. the mirror breaks and there's tons of pieces just everywhere yeah. and on one side of a piece is a dark side mm-hmm. on the other side is a light side and a reflective side yeah. and we're let's say I'm a piece and you're a piece mm-hmm. you are a very extremely unique cut piece by how you landed Mm-hmm. And I am too. I'm unique. I'm my own person. You're your own piece. Yeah. But at the same time, we are all going through the same emotions. At the end of the day, we're all kind of going through this thing called life. Mm-hmm. So you're a reflection of me. You're an aspect of me. Sure. You have your faults, but you have your obviously your lights and your good sides too. Mm-hmm. So I can easily tell someone that I love them because I love myself and I know they are just another aspect of me because they are human. Right. Because they have emotions. Yeah. Because they're living this life. And we're just, you know, like Jesus is our brother and he's actually evolved enough to be an example of what it means to be truly self-aware. Right. And we're just on that journey. So my spirituality is just understanding what can I learn from you? Mm-hmm. We're teachers and students simultaneously. And to think that I'm higher than anyone would just separate me but we're all a piece of a mirror this right. a bush a chair anything that exists mm-hmm. is a part of the mirror yeah, yeah. whether it's a piece of shit yeah. 
or of treasure of gold. Right. It's all an aspect of God. Right. Because it's a part of the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? It makes sense, and I actually think it's a beautiful metaphor. Um, but, again, to me, you're just kind of telling me how you view yourself in the universe, and you view your role mm. in the universe, um, and how you view things sort of spiritually. Um, but I guess my questions are more, like, dogmatic, like, you know, like, Big Bang versus, you know, God, actually. Wouldn't the Big Bang come from God? Well, I, I mean, I think so. But, yeah. but I'm saying, if you believe that, then, you know, say what you want, you believe in God. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and I have no problem saying God. Right, right. But it's probably maybe not, it probably doesn't look like what the pictures are painted in the churches look like. Sure. But God is just, at the end of the day, a higher frequency. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask this. Do you believe that God, in whatever capacity or form he or she takes, do you believe it is like a human being? Um. Rather than just like no. a magic cloud of power? I don't think... And I'm not, trying no. to, I'm not trying to ruffle your feathers. I'm just curious. Do I seem ruffled? No, I just... Uh, you're wearing a jacket. I can't see your feathers. <laughs> I actually dare you to try to ruffle. <laughs> I just like thinking. Yeah, sure. I just I love these questions. I'm not ruffled at all. Um, no, I don't. Okay, okay. And that's all I wanted to know. Oh. Yeah. That easy, huh? Yeah, it was that easy. <laughs> it took us a while to get there. But... I like talking about it, though. Yeah. Um, because it helps me be able to... I just, I, I feel like sometimes when I ask people um, if they believe in God, when we're kind of talking religion, and they're not, they're not like outwardly atheist, um, but they don't want to say yes or no. They want to say, well, you know, to me, God is this or this or this or this. Yeah. And I'm like, that's great. Yeah. But that's not what I asked. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. But maybe they're doing that because at the end of the day, I don't know anything. Right. No, and that's fine. But I would love that answer. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm just not sure. Yeah. Um, but I think people are afraid to say that. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, I don't know anything. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't mean, yeah, people, uh, I mean, in respect to their belief in a God being, mm -hmm. being sort of the, the grand maker and supreme being. I think people have trouble. If they're, if they're a little confused or not sure, or if they're feeling a little um, anti-religion, yeah. especially, yeah. Um, they want to feel, I think people naturally want to have a spiritual side, right? Even if they are disgruntled with religion or they think God doesn't exist or God doesn't care about them or Ever. I think people want to understand their place in all of this, right? Mm -hmm. They want to feel a spiritual connection to things, but they don't necessarily want to say, I don't believe in God, because then they're like stamped an atheist. Yeah. And that has sort of a bad connotation. And maybe they're not knowledgeable enough about things to say, oh, you know, I'm an existential agnostic, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They just want to say, well, I'm spiritual. And I find love in this and joy in this, and that's great, and I get it. I just sometimes want to be like, just say yes or no. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I mean, all answers are, are great and correct. I just feel like in the past, with people, they've been kind of skirting around answers. But you know they're only doing that because they haven't come. Simplicity is sophistication, so it would have to be a very self-aware and self-studied person to be able to be like, Taylor, no. Yeah, yeah. But it's a journey. Like, it took me so long, like, probably six years, because I, I did leave the church. I mm -hmm. didn't call myself a Mormon anymore. Yeah. And even just hearing the word, uh, like, Jesus, like, shook me, because yeah. I was just like, oh, like, I was finding a new foundation. Right. And that takes a while, especially in Utah, like, when people really can be so black and white, like people can hate the church. Sure, yeah, yeah. And then you know, the eventually, like, how long can you hate it, bro? Right. So, 
apparently I'm not at the point where I could be like yes or no, but I do like how you look for that simple boom. Right. But that takes a lot of like analysis. And, yeah, sure. Which I like. Yeah. And hey, I'm fine if you're like, you know what, I can't find a yes or no. I'm not, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I feel like very few people will come out and say that. Yeah. Which is kind of sad. Well, I mean that that's that's fine. Everybody. Because who are you trying to who are you trying to look good for, bro? No one knows anything. I don't know. Just look good for me. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I love it. I think we had a good talk. How we long did is this talk. one? I don't know. I don't care how long it is. That was like, I don't know. This is a good one though. We kind yeah, of covered a lot uh, of stuff. We put in an hour plus. Nice. Is there any other uh, any other deep curiosities you have, since you know very little about me? Deep curiosities, specifically for Taylor. Yes. Well, because I'm not into astrology, <laughs> so I can't go there with you. Um, yeah, so what are some of... I want you to, to feed your ego a little bit on here. Oh, what books yeah. have you written? What mm -hmm. books do you want to write? What type of topics like intrigue you? Obviously history. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. My my ego's been getting hungry, so <laughs> also let's feed this beast. <laughs> um, so, wait, did I say this off the air, or did I say it on the air when I told you what my books were about? Was that before we, we did talk about the books for a minute on air. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm losing track. But um, yeah, I'm I'm interested in. Now I don't want this to sound too reductive, but I'm just interested in the human experience. Cool. Okay, so I want to write about life and how how humans are affected, and just it sounds so simple, but just what it means to be a human being, right? Yeah. So whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Um, I want to tell stories that move people. I love that. Yeah, and that's kind of um, that's kind of the simplest way to put it, because I can see myself writing a lot of different things with different themes and different topics, but that is kind of the the baseline of what I'm interested in. I love how you keep it simple. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of projects I have in my head of things I'd like to do. I'd like to write about, um, but yeah, it'll all kind of come back to that. And whether whether I write more fiction or more nonfiction is kind of yet to be seen. Because, um, like I said, this novel I just finished that's not out yet is the first fiction I've ever written, um, and it's very um, just character driven rather than plot driven. It's just literary fiction, so it's not like you know, there's a big climax in the story and a big uh, like protagonist and antagonist and you know a big plot twist and turn it's just kind of about a guy's life and how relationships affected him how his childhood affected him and when I say that people always think oh it's probably autobiographical but it's, it's not it's just kind of a character that is kind of formed in my mind and I wanted to write about I wanted to kind of I wanted to kind of find out what his life would be, and so I wrote about it. <laughs> That's really cool. That makes sense, yeah. Because to me, that uses a very creative side of the brain yeah. to be able to write a book about a character that you made up going through certain scenarios and mindsets and a journey. Like, yeah. that blows my mind because I could, I mean, I just could never see myself doing that, yeah. so that's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's a fun little kind of, uh, even though because my stuff isn't widely out there yet it's hard to even say how talented I am you know because when I read my stuff a lot of times I think oh this is amazing this is great and then other times I'm like this is this is manure this is bad yeah <laughs> you know it's hard it's really hard to to gauge um, the skill of, of what you're doing but um, but yeah I enjoy it and I think I think I'm good at it I know there's a lot of things in life, a lot of skills that people have that I could never do. For so sure. I definitely can relate when people are like, oh, I could never do that. 
I'm like, well, I can never solve a basic math problem. Same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I have a lot of friends that are like in the finance or economics program at BYU, and you know, we, we get along great, and I like being around intelligent people. Yeah. Um, and I wish I had those skills. I just. <laughs> I can't either. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Well, um, tell everyone where they can find you, your books, my anything address, you want to. Home address. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoever would like to find me, I'm there to be found. Um, <laughs> okay. So, my uh, my two books are called "I'm Trying Here" and "Return Not Desired." Uh, they're both on Amazon. And I always tell people, I always have copies that I'm willing to sign and mail to people um, or people live nearby and want to come swing by and meet me and get a signed book. I'm down. Sweet. Um, but yeah, most of most of the time my interactions with people are on Instagram. Um, just Taylor, at Taylor Church 44 um, And I have a YouTube channel. It's just a Taylor Church 44. I think you can just search Taylor Church and find me, but you might. My name is kind of tricky because you always find like some church in a town called Taylor. You know, it's, a little, it's a little frustrating, but <laughs> I need to be. I need to become more famous, so I'm the first thing that pops up. I, I understand that. So, Hashtag. Yeah, but yeah, um, at Taylor Church Forty Four, I'm not. It's the same on Twitter, but I don't. I'm not a big Twitter guy. But yeah, I'll probably probably put this episode on my YouTube channel, and I will be starting a podcast very soon. Like so soon. You like think. so soon. You, you probably it's probably out right now. That's how soon it is. Yeah. 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 Even though I haven't recorded an episode yet, it's probably out. <laughs> um, but don't search it. You won't. You won't have trouble finding it. It's only available in. Well, let's see. We're coming to the middle ground of September. Yeah. So uh, I'll probably be posting this next few days. Hopefully, Paul. Paul. I need. I'm not tech savvy. It's like I have all these episodes, and I'm just gonna bust them out. But hey, it's a journey. All I know is I love podcasting. You. I think you're a great podcaster. I knew this would be awesome. Good. I'm glad. Now tell me. Tell me real quick. Why? What made you invite me on the show? Because we've never met. For all the viewers. I just go with my gut. Yeah. But what did your gut tell you? So, yeah. We were homies on Instagram. Yeah. And well, when I saw you doing lives and the TVs on um, Instagram, yeah. I was like, we could chat. I yeah. could just tell. Yeah. I can just tell. And then you're like, I'm a Gemini. Except I just found that out like an hour ago. So, I was like, oh. No, you texted me when we were Or did I ask this. you during like, the text? You're like, by the way, what's your zodiac sign? Oh yeah, and you said Gemini. Yeah. 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 Um, but I just kind of like went with my gut. Yeah. I could just tell on Instagram. My gut has shit for brains. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My my gut is right sometimes. My gut's been really right lately. Nice. Yeah, it's really cool. It makes things easier. Well, it's because you're on the eat so well, probably. <sighs> Not yesterday. Not yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was a bad day. Emotional. I blame the weather. How's that for victimization? <laughs> but you guys, we gotta cut this short because I feel like we could just talk all day. But if you guys want to let me know if you have any topics specifically you want to talk about, I'm always on Instagram. It's x period o period JoJo. I do have a website, Holistic Hype. You can email me if you want to work with me. I do have a YouTube and it's Holistic Hype. But for real, find me on Instagram because I'm there most of the time. And thanks for tuning in. Love you guys so much. Check out Taylor's stuff. Freaking awesome. And we will be back with you shortly. Have a gravy day. Peace. Oh. Cool. That's fun. <laughs>